OK, Robert, thanks very much indeed. Well, let's talk now to the Chief Fire Officer for East Sussex Fire and Rescue Service, Des Pritchard. Mr Pritchard, I'm grateful for you. Must be a terribly difficult time for the families and, of course, for the firefighters who are still at the scene. Uh, good afternoon, John. Yes, it was a very traumatic afternoon and evening for all the personnel in East Sussex Fire and Rescue Service. Uh, in my 30 years service, it's been one of the most difficult tasks I've had to do was informing uh, two families that they'd lost loved ones. Uh, many of the firefighters at the scene were traumatised by the events and once the explosion occurred, they have to then seek to rescue their colleagues, police officers, ambulance personnel and members of the public that were caught in the explosion. Are there lessons, do you think, to be learned in the way that you tackle a fire at a fireworks factory? Because the very nature of the, the place you're dealing with is unstable and uncertain. Well, well a, a, any fire presents hazards, John, and our crews uh, would use a dynamic risk assessment to carry out their actions when they first arrived on the scene. But during the course of operations, uh, a huge explosion occurred. That will be the subject of a thorough investigation involving the HSE, uh, Sussex Police, Scenes of Crimes Officers and the Fire and Rescue Service. We need to investigate this thoroughly to ascertain what caused the explosion and also what caused the fire in the first instance. But I must uh, reiterate that our thoughts really at this time are very much with two families that lost loved ones yesterday. Sure, and you make clear the point that you're, you've got, still got work to do. Take us through what's going to be happening at, at the scene now over the next 24, 48 hours. Uh, one of the issues that we've found is through looking at the manifest on the site, there were a number of acetylene cylinders stored on the site. Uh, we need to ascertain whether these cylinders have been heated or whether they've been shocked in the explosion. One of the natures of acetylene is that it can become very unstable if heated or shocked by, by an explosion and it can itself explode and the cylinder becomes a projectile hazard. That's why there's a 200 metre exclusion zone around the site. We've been very ably assisted by the bomb disposal unit and they're on site because they have remote controlled vehicles that can go onto the site and seek to ascertain the location of the acetylene cylinders and to see whether they have been exposed to heat. We're also using the police helicopter and our own thermal imaging cameras to look at the site and to look at to where these acetylene cylinders are stored. That's the main hazard for us at the moment. Okay. We're hoping we're able to access the site later on today, but there's only about three hours of daylight left.